Hello, welcome to another Trendy Tuesday or Q&A with Dr. Yen. Uh, today we are talking about some exciting topics, so stay tuned. My name is Iris. I am a rising senior at MIT studying biological engineering and a aspiring doctor. Uh, so I have a lot, a few things in common with Dr. Yen, who also went to MIT. Uh, so yeah, she is our CEO and co-founder of Pandia Health. Um, and every Tuesday, we're here answering common birth control questions or female reproductive health. Um, and yeah, just staying informed and up to date on what's going on. So before we get started, make sure that if you already have a, an active birth control prescription to sign up with Pandia Health to get automatic refills and uh, your birth control delivered uh, straight to your mailbox with free delivery. If you need a new prescription and you're in California, Florida, or Texas, make sure uh, to sign up to see one of our doctors, our expert doctors who can guide you through getting a prescription. And then on top of that, you can get a, an emergency contraception, birth control uh, prescription, and of course, the free delivery that comes with all of our services. So make sure to use the code trending if you sign up here, scrolling at the bottom, um, to make sure that we know that you heard about it from us. So on to the topics for today. Uh, so these are some common asked questions on Google that people have. So we wanted to address them here. So number one, why is birth control bad for you? Yeah, so I think in general, um, the benefits of birth control outweigh the risks. And obviously so, or else we as physicians would not recommend people use them. But I think the question is probably what could possibly go wrong if I were to use birth control? And it obviously depends on which method. If you're using condoms, there is really no danger other than if you are allergic to latex. Hmm. And some people say they're allergic to latex, but I ask you to put a glove on that's latex or a condom on your finger for 30 minutes. And if nothing happens, you're not allergic to latex. What has happened in the past with condoms is that there was, um, they had non-oxal nine, which is a spermicide. And if you have a ton of sex, and usually that's like 30 to 60 sex in a day, then yes, that non-oxal nine as a spermicide is a detergent and that will irritate the inside of the vagina but that should do nothing to the penis. So if somebody with a penis is they're allergic to condoms or allergic to latex, have them put it on their thumb or their finger for 20, 30 minutes. And if it's fine, then they're fine. But that's the most dangerous thing that can happen with uh, the condom other than it popping and then you end up pregnant. But that's a totally different thing. And that's emergency contraception. Mm -hmm. However, with the pill, the patch, the ring, the main issue is all of these methods have the same hormones in that they have estrogen and progesterone. And the risk from progesterone is really nothing, but the risk from estrogen is that uh, it can put you at a tendency towards blood clots. Mm -hmm. So the increased risk is 13 out of 100,000 more cases. So like for 100,000 women, 13 of them would be at risk for some sort of blood clot. Okay. A blood clot necessarily wouldn't necessarily make them die, but it would be inconvenient to get a blood clot. So the most um, common places for a bad blood clot, it's not like you cut your skin and you clot, that's normal, but like a blood clot in your head, a blood clot in your chest, a blood clot in your abdomen, and a blood clot in your leg. And so we call this the aches mnemonic, abdomen, chest, head, um, eyes and stomach, I think. Oh no, one of them's gotta be a leg. <laughs> <laughs> so extremities maybe, extremities, and then um, stomach, I think. And so those are the places that you could get a blood clot. If you um, have double vision, you have a horrible headache, you have horrible chest pain, if one of your legs swell, not both of them, if both of them swell at something else, go to the ER, tell them you're on the birth control pill patch ring, and it could be a blood clot in those areas. But only do it if it lasts greater than 20 minutes. If it's less than 20 minutes, it's something else. And certainly if you just banged your head or you just did some alcohol or drugs or whatever, totally different thing. But if you have any of those other symptoms, then it could be a blood clot in those areas. But as long as you're under the age of 35 and a non-smoker, your risk of blood clots is very, very, very low. However, if you're 35 and a smoker, then no estrogen for you. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of patients that are 35 and they smoke and they're like, why? And we're like, cause blood clot. And so the risk is greater than the benefit if you are 35 and a smoker. And if you're under uh, 35, as a physician in general, I just 
you know, advise that you quit or cut down to the best of your ability to decrease your risk of cancer in general and um, other bad, you know, health outcomes that come from that. Yeah, so it's mostly like estrogen that could be bad for you. And if you're a smoker and then with a condom, it's like maybe if you're allergic, uh, but you got to make sure you're actually allergic and not just lying. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and then there's also the copper IUD, which is its own category. Again, if you're somehow allergic to copper, which there are those people, um, but uh, the other thing is just it has bad side effects. And so we could go through the mm -hmm. side effects of all the birth controls, but that would be a lot. Um, but copper IUD cover has more blood, more painful cramps. But if you're a person who gets your periods and you don't notice any cramps, you don't notice any blood, it's just like leaking down your leg and you're like, oh, no big deal, then you are the perfect candidate for the copper IUD. However, if you're the person that's like, <laughs> every time anything happens in your uterus, then probably not good for you because you will feel the copper IUD more and there will be more blood coming down. And this yeah. is what I can bring in my uterus prop. <laughs> Cute. Um, yeah, so it's just like bad side effects um, or like when you're already in a painful position, which you don't want to go there. I would hate to have extremely like more crampy periods than I already have. So I know the copper IED is not for me. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next question, which is why birth control should be free. So as I like to say, and it was hard to do in Spanish, it's uh, fiscally right and fiscally smart and morally right to cover birth control. Fiscally smart because birth control costs like $15 a month, or if you're an insurance company, you buy a ton of it, or if you're an NGO or World Health Organization, it is like a dollar to $5 a pack of pills versus an abortion is $800, a vaginal delivery is $10,000, and a C-section is $40,000. And that's just for that baby coming out. That's not including the pre and postnatal natal care. It's not including the ultrasounds and the blood tests. And it's not including the cost of an unwanted pregnancy to a family or to an individual and that next 18 or lifelong, you know, consequences of that. This is purely numbers. And mm -hmm. most private insurances um, used to cover birth control but thanks to the Supreme Court, which was very biased, and I don't know why, and if we had all women, it probably hopefully would have been a different result. Um, they voted that if your employer cites a strong moral conviction or a religion, they can choose not to cover your birth control. And my argument there is that corporations are not people. They don't have a soul. They can't go to heaven. They can't go to hell. They can't go to church. So how do they have a religion? Certainly your employer or the owner of the company might have that, but that is not the company. That yeah. is, the company is on a piece of paper and is a government entity or a legal entity. It's not a person. And therefore your health insurance coverage should not be dictated by your boss's interpretation of the religion. Because even within the same religion, they can differ on where they stand on birth control. There's mm -hmm. a group called Catholics for Choice and they differ on abortion. So if you can differ on abortion, you can certainly differ on birth control. And so yeah. I think America was built on freedom of religion. Each person should decide for themselves. By taking it away based on your employer, that is not allowing me freedom of religion. And then they also argue that, you know, well, they're paying for it. Actually, they're not. It's actually your benefit as an employee. You get taxed on this stuff mm -hmm. and it's part of your pay, these benefits. So it's not forcing them to pay. It's using what they would pay you to pay for something that you want. And if you don't want it, don't take advantage of it. You know, it's yeah. not adding cost to the system. It's actually saving. And yeah. if you are anti-abortion, let's prevent unplanned pregnancies because mm -hmm. with unplanned pregnancies come abortion. Yeah. I actually didn't know that it was being taken away from your benefits. So that's something good to point out because I feel like a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's your benefits. It's part of what you're entitled to as an employee. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Um, cool. So the next question is why should you or why take birth control? So I think the key is obviously to prevent unplanned pregnancy, but I think the, the underlying question is what are other reasons to use quote birth control 
hormonal treatment, as we like to call it, or proge uh, estrogen progesterone pills. So instead of calling them OCP, oral contraceptive pills, we're advocating for everybody to call it EPP, estrogen progesterone pills. So there's no stigma of birth control or contraception to it. It's just what's in the pill. That's what I love about medicine and biology. We name it what it is. So um, the things that are non-contraceptive that women use birth control for is um, horrible evil period. So um, just ton of blood gushing out, causing anemia, P horrible painful periods. We call that dysmenorrhea, missing work, missing school. One of the top reasons that women 25 and under miss school or work is their periods. And I've seen myself, and every time I give a talk, each woman's like, yeah, I used to take one day off work every month. And I was like, what? You know, like that's one thirtieth of your productivity. Or if it's 20 days to a month of school, that's, um, you know, 5% or something like that, right? Of your education. So it, you should not be missing school. You should not be work, missing work because of bad, evil, painful, too much blood periods. If you are, please see a medical provider to take care of that because you can start with ibuprofen or if that doesn't work, then there are other hormonal treatments that we can advise to make it such that you can function and contribute to society. Um, acne, um, it's not a cure for acne, but if like <laughs> me, every single month I would get one zit. I would get a zit here, a zit here, or a zit here, the North Star but only mm. with that time of the month. I forget if it was before, during, or after, but I was like, great, not only am I bleeding, but I'm ugly mm. and, so, and, and painful, you know? And um, once I went on the birth control pills and then it, it gets even better if you skip that week off, because that week off you drop the hormones and you risk um, that hormonal issue again, all that went away. But a lot of women do turn to the birth control pill for acne. And what I want them to know is it works well for a lot of people if your acne is only hormonally related. But if it's just strong, evil teenager acne, you're going to need more. You're going to need a prescription cream. You're going to need some benzoyl peroxide just because don't rely on the birth control pill solely for your acne. Because we have a lot of patients get very upset. They're like, it didn't get rid of, I still have acne. And it's like, it's only the cure. hormonal part. It's not the cure. Yeah. You're going to need the other stuff. And some of it may be time. you got to grow out of it. But my husband still has back acne, and he's like 50. So some people, just their hormones are going forever. Hmm. So, yeah, there's many reasons why you should take uh, birth control. Many people, why people do take birth control, which is not related to birth uh, or, like, reproductive reasons at all. Um and it's good to know that and feel like it's okay to take birth control or take uh, estrogen, progesterone pills. <laughs> um, or hormonal treatment. Yeah, just to make yourself feel like a better functioning human being um, that it doesn't have stabbing pains on the inside. Um, yeah, so yeah. it's totally valid also, if you want to do that. Um, I spoke to a psychiatrist and just the cycling up and cycling down every single month that we do is not good for your emotions. And so mm -hmm. it's much better just to be on a stable level of hormones if you can. And the birth control pill patch and ring can do that if you skip that week off or just in general, at least you're stable for three weeks and that one week you have a bleed and a drop of hormones. But if you can just maintain stable, it's better for depression, it's better for seizures, it's better for diabetes. Mm -hmm. So that's good. People, you know, like people blame your mood on your period. Now, if you're on the pill, maybe you're a little bit more calmed down on the same level the whole time. So, um, yeah, you're feeling okay the whole time. Cool. So uh, next question is, why do antibiotics affect birth control? So there's only been um, two antibiotics specifically that affect birth control, rifampin, which is an anti-tuberculosis drug, and griseofulvin, which is used for fungus of the head and really only happens in younger kids and African-Americans. Asians and Caucasians, we get lice. African-Americans, unfortunately, get fungus of the head, but they don't get lice. So there are bad things that plague each different ethnicity. <laughs> but um, for griseofulvin and rifampin, specifically, if you are on that and a birth control pill patch ring and possibly the other hormonal methods that, as well, but we have more info about the estrogen progesterone ones, then you should use a backup 
while you're on it. And in general, I always recommend condoms to prevent sexually transmitted infections. And also, even though I'm in a monogamous relationship with my husband, I don't like to leak sperm for 24 hours. So I just think everybody should use condoms all mm -hmm. the time because who likes to leak sperm? Um, yeah. The other thing though, is that each woman is different. And you will hear me say that over and over and over again. Most stuff works for 95% of the people, but 5% of the people will have issues. And what it is, is there's the enterohepatic circulation of your birth control hormones. And entero means stomach eating area. Hepatic means your liver. And so there's, you take the hormone and it's like circulating between this thing. But if you take antibiotics and you kill the bacteria, that messes up the circulation mm -hmm. and your hormone level might be lower. So if you're going on, I think a severe dose of antibiotics, like, you know, if you're in the hospital or you have some horrible infection, you need it for five to 10 days, then it never hurts to use a backup method because better to use a condom than to end up pregnant. Mm -hmm. And you won't know that it didn't work until you end up pregnant. And that mm -hmm. is not a good way to find out. So um, just, better safe than sorry. Yeah. But if you really look at the literature, it's only been shown in two specific antibiotics. Yeah. So I was going to say better safe than sorry. Like condom is always a great way to go if you're scared that your birth control is going to fail on you. Um, like not just with antibiotics. If uh, I don't know, maybe you're ending a pill pack and you just have like one day in between, like make sure to use a condom. <laughs> um, well, that is the one question I do really want to hit is a lot of people are worried on their days. If they do take the sugar pills on their birth control pill, they're worried they can get pregnant during that week. And the answer is no. If you're on the birth control pill patch or ring and you're taking it consistently that week off, you should be fine, though we really don't recommend more than five days off. Oh. The week off was originally designed when the birth control pill had 110 micrograms of estrogen. And now we're down to 35, 30. Some people are in 20, some people are in 10. And they've noticed if you go the whole seven days that an egg might pop out. And so the birth control pill works by making sure an egg doesn't pop out. If there's yeah. no egg, you can't get pregnant. But the other way it works is it thins the lining so that if an egg and sperm hooks up, then it doesn't have enough nutrition to grow or to do whatever it wants. So if an egg mm -hmm. does pop out, you probably will still be covered because the thinning of the lining possibly, but again, better safe than sorry. So if you're not going to skip that last week of pill patch ring, at least consider shortening it to five days at the maximum of being off is what I would suggest. And if you're heavier, then I would shorten it to four days or skip it altogether because they've shown women who have a higher body mass index heavier. Um, it takes them a longer time for the hormones to get to steady state. Hmm, yeah, good to know because I really <laughs> was about to give people advice on the birth control pack. So now you know it stays in your system for a little bit depending on your BMI. Um, and so, but yeah, again, better to be safe than sorry, use a condom. <laughs> um, cool. So next question that we have is who do I get birth control from? Yes. So in the United States, it differs because some countries it's over the counter. And the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has said in 2012, I believe 2016, and again in 2018, that birth control should be over the counter. However, that is not the state in this country. And there are two of my friends that are working to get it over the counter, but they are different pills and there are better pills with fewer side effects that are not going over the counter, unfortunately. But that is to say, doctors, nurse practitioners, and physician's assistants are allowed to write prescriptions for birth control. And in a lot of states, the pharmacist can write a prescription for birth control, but they have to have gone through some special training. It cannot be the random pill person at the pharmacy. They have to have gone through the training. So those are the four people. Yes, four people that you can get birth control from. Um, in the United States. And what we want you to know is that Pandia Health in California, Florida, or Texas, um, we can write you the birth control prescription. It's just $20 a year to use our birth control experts who are passionate and specialize in birth control to write you the prescription if it's safe. And then we'll bill your insurance or bill your credit card, depending if you don't have insurance or not, and ship it by mail. Set it and forget it. Let Pandia Health worry so you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, yes. And then you never have to think about it. Like it just refills automatically. If your insurance covers it, it's covered. 
And if it's about to expire two months ahead of time, if you're using your doctor and we're happy for you to use our doctor and not use your doctor and not use our doctor, we'll say, hey, go see your doctor. Your prescription's about to run out. And then one month ahead of time, hey, go see your doctor. Your prescription's about to run out. And if you still haven't refilled it, then we will bug you the last week every single day. Go fill your prescription. That's good. Some accountability. Yeah, we don't want you to run out of birth control. That is that is the whole reason I started this company. Mm-hmm. No one runs out of birth control on our watch to the best of our ability. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Um, and then the last question that we have today is who can get birth control pills? Yeah, so I think there's two kind of ways to go at this. Um, if you are under the age of 18, that might be what this question is about. Um, mm-hmm. Each state is different. You need to check your state laws. For Texas and Florida in general, you need your parents' consent. However, across the nation, there are specific clinics called Title X or Title 10. Title 10 is the proper word, but you'll see it written as X because it's Mm -hmm. doing the Latin thing. And these clinics, um, I believe anyone of any age is allowed to get birth control with their own consent, but only if that clinic is a Title 10 clinic. And unfortunately, Pandia Health is not one of those clinics. So for Texas and Florida, we need your parents' consent if we're going to give you birth control um, for birth control or for any reason at all. In California, um, anyone of any age has the right to consent for the diagnosis, prevention, and treatment of uh, pregnancy. However, if at any time in any state, if the physician feels that this is a situation of abuse or sex trafficking or any kind of doubt in our mind, we are legally obligated to report to the um, Child Protective Services that, holy crap, this kid is 12 and having sex, even if it's consensual, is not quite developmentally right, yeah. you know. Um, but one has to risk, you know, if they're having sex at 12 and I don't give her birth control, she ends up pregnant, right? but I have to report if there's any doubt in my mind that this is a bad situation. So um, in the state of California, if you're under 18 and you're here for birth control and we don't feel that there's any chance of sexual abuse or something whack going on in the relationship, then we can write the prescription. But if we feel there's anything going down bad, we're gonna report to Child Protective Services. And then I think the flip side of this question is, who is it dangerous to use birth control? And I think specifically that's for any method containing estrogen. And again, it's the whole blood clot thing. So Mm -hmm. if you personally have had a blood clot in any of those places we talked about, so in your head, in your stomach, in your chest, in your leg, and not just a blood clot, you cut yourself in the heel, that's normal. But like you had to go to the hospital and they had to cut something out or you were hospitalized for, you were put on anticoagulants, then no, no estrogen birth control for you. If you have hepatitis Mm -hmm. and it's active, or if you have cancer of the liver, or if you have, um, one thing we forgot in the last one was migraine with aura. So if you just have regular migraine, it's fine. If you have migraine with flashing lights or a part of your body doesn't work and it's drooping or whatever, then no, you cannot have estrogen because that's kind of like a mini stroke. And Uh, estrogen puts you at a greater risk of blood clot So then a greater risk of stroke if you have migraine with aura. And then if you have breast cancer, some breast cancer is better on birth control, but a lot of it is estrogen or progesterone sensitive. So then it might make it worse. If you have breast cancer, please see your oncologist to discuss and decide. So, um, and then smoker and 35. If you're a smoker and 35, eh. If you're just a smoker, not so much, but if you're 35, not so much, but 35 and smoker, 35 and above, eh, no estrogen for you. We can provide the progesterone only pill, but at Pandia Health, being the only doctor led company, a doctor who's, not all doctors, have taken the Hippocratic Oath, a CEO who's taken the Hippocratic Oath, we will always tell you what's best for your health, even if it doesn't benefit my bottom line. And so I would recommend the IUD with hormone, the implant or the shot over the progesterone only pill. Because if you take the progesterone only pill three hours late, then it doesn't work. And you need some emergency contraception and you need to use a backup method for the next three days. So um, I that's just very stressful. But if you are anal retentive and can take your pill every single day at the exact same time, yay. 
or if just right now it's COVID and you can't get in to get an IUD implant or shot, then better something than nothing. But yeah. always, I always say throw it in the condom because always two things are better than one. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a blog post actually that I worked on, which is on uh, birth control effectiveness math um, in our uh, website, pandiahealth.com that you should check out, which like shows you which is the best combination to get the least pregnant or like <laughs> the most likely to not get you pregnant. Um, yes. Yeah. So I guess I, I kind of going back to what you were saying about the ages, you said in California, you had to be 13. In California, technically, there's no age at all. Well, but if at any point we feel that there is something whack going on, we have to per, we have to report to the California Child Protective Services, CPS. Mm -hmm. And is every other state uh, like besides Cal uh, Texas and Florida, is there an age that you're aware of? So it depends on each state. Some states have parental notification laws. Some states have parental consent laws. Um, some states, it's, it's not clear. A good website is National Center for Youth Law. And another good website is Allen Guttmacher Institute. And they have it listed by state and then minor consent and possibly the age, parental notification, parental consent kind of situation for birth control. Make sure you're clear what you're reading because um, some of these phrases may be for abortion and not birth control, two totally different things. One is to prevent a pregnancy, one is once you're pregnant. So make sure it says contraception and not abortion and it's state by state. Okay, okay, good to know. Um, well, awesome, we learned a lot today. So make sure that if you're interested in learning more, we have a few of these videos on our Facebook page and our YouTube. Um, but yeah, thank you, Dr. Yan, for coming out to speak with us today and sharing your knowledge um, and inspiring us. Uh, so if you guys haven't heard of Pandia Health yet, make sure to check out our services on our website, pandiahealth.com, and our blogs. Uh, we are a birth control delivery service, only the only women-founded, women-led, doctor-led birth control delivery service in the game. Uh, so yeah, make sure to follow us on all of our social media and check us out next week when we'll be doing another live. Yes, Thank you guys for tuning in. To hit us up on Facebook, Instagram with any questions anytime about birth control. But this uh, Tuesday at 5 30 or 5 o'clock in Spanish is a great opportunity to connect with me or another physician live and our amazing host, um, Iris, who is here for the summer, but maybe we can have her throughout the year. Maybe. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Bye.